Jonathan, a disappointing day for Dublin and for Irish football. No, absolutely. And uh, it's not just a disappointing day for all of the FAI staff here at um, our offices in Abbottstown, um, but also for many other people who've been working actually tirelessly on the project for, um, for over seven years now. So our, um, our bid partners uh, at Dublin City Council, uh, the government and Aviva Stadium, and we want to thank them for all of their support and help over that period, but also our event partners uh, with the LOS team um, and in particular our 1,200 volunteers um, who have also worked extraordinarily hard uh, to get to this point. And let's be clear, we were ready to, um, to host the Games uh, if we were allowed to. But the reality is, is that since the turn of the year, uh, the pandemic situation here in Ireland has, uh, has worsened rather than improved. And as much as uh, UEFA wanted to have fans uh, in our stadia, uh, the government, uh, as hard as they tried, couldn't find a way to uh, allow us to have uh, the 25% that UEFA wanted. And uh, in the end, uh, as we have done across the whole of uh, the past 12 months or so, uh, we absolutely respect the government's position and ultimately public safety uh, is the most important thing. And uh, so in the end, it became quite simple. Uh, UEFA wanted fans in the stadia. Um, our government, as hard as they tried, couldn't find a way to uh, uh, deliver on that and so we've got to the decision that's been made today. It'll be a particular disappointment for the Polish and Slovakian community living in Ireland. No, absolutely, and I feel, I feel desperately for them who wanted to see their teams uh, uh, here in Dublin. And uh, look, I also feel sorry for those people here in Ireland who had tickets for the matches as well because they were thoroughly looking forward to them. Uh, and I'd also like to say um, you know, an apology really to the, uh, uh, the Swedish, the Polish and the Slovakian FA that they can't get to um, Dublin and to uh, enjoy first of all the hospitality that Dublin would almost certainly have given them and for them to have seen at first hand the passion that we have here in Ireland for the game of football. That's a real shame but as I say we are where we are. So Jonathan, where now for Dublin and for the FAI? Well, first of all, I'm pleased to say that we had very constructive discussions with UEFA and I'm thrilled at the prospect of us hosting um, a UEFA club final at some point in the very near future here in Dublin. So that's, uh, that's great news. Uh, secondly, uh, we remain committed to working with um, our fellow FAs uh, of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland in relation to the feasibility study um, for hosting a FIFA World Cup in 2030. So that remains a priority for us. But most importantly, we now double down on our efforts um, to get uh, fans back into our own stadia um, across the rest of this year. So I'm talking about our League of Ireland stadia, our Women's National League stadia, and in particular, ahead of our World Cup qualifiers uh, in the autumn, back into the Avida Stadium and also back into Tallah Stadium as well. So uh, we, we will really work hard on that um, moving forward. And then secondly, um, I think probably it's fair to say when uh, when one door closes, another window opens. So I'm actually thrilled that we can say uh, that on Monday, our younger players can get back to non-contact training. So that's a really important point for us. And our commitment now is to push government as hard as we can to get all of our players back and playing and training uh, and enjoying the game of football that they love.